In this video, I'm going to introduce the Hallowell Canes. So we're going to look at how to identify them, how to name them, how to classify them, and then we'll have a quick look at how they react. Okay, so the first thing is, why are these all hollow alkanes? It's a very, very simple reason. Alkane, where a hydrogen, at least one hydrogen, has been replaced by a halogen atom. So in terms of naming, if you want to have a go at naming these, just pause the video and try yourselves and then uh, play on for the answer. So on the left, we've got chloroethane. So two carbons is the ethane part. Um, chlorine on one of the carbons, so chloroethane. Middle one now, so obviously that's propane, and we've got a bromine on carbon number two, so that's called 2-bromopropane. And the third one, we've got essentially a propane molecule with a methyl group and an iodine on that central carbon, so carbon number two. So using the alphabet rule, the iodo would come first because it begins with an I, which is before M in the alphabet. So 2-iodo, two 2-methyl, two propane. In terms of classifying haloalkanes, it's just like how you classify an alcohol. So it's all to do with the number of carbon atoms that are directly attached to the carbon with the halogen on. So if I just circle these, so this one here, has got one carbon directly attached to the carbon with the halogen on. So this is a primary haloalkane. Not being very original with these because they're in order. So this is a secondary haloalkane. And of course, this one will be tertiary. Okay, so moving on to the reactivity of the haloalkanes. I'll just illustrate this using this 2 bromopropane molecule. So we've got this carbon-halogen bond in the molecule and that's going to be polar because we've got a slightly more electronegative halogen atom bonded to a carbon. So the electron density will be more concentrated towards the halogen atom, so bromine in this case, which means that the bromine is slightly negative and the carbon is slightly positive. So because of that delta positive carbon, the haloalkane is able to attract a species that is able to donate a pair of electrons. So if you think about something with a lone pair, like a hydroxide ion, it's a pair of electrons on the oxygen, that's going to be attracted to that slightly positive carbon. So in other words, haloalkanes are going to react with nucleophiles, electron pair donors. And of course, other nucleophiles exist. There's a couple more. Water, you can see, has obviously the two lone pairs on the oxygen atom. So if you had H2O there, the lone pair could be attracted to that slightly positive carbon. Likewise, the ammonia molecule, you've got a lone pair of electrons on the nitrogen, that could do the same. So we'll just finish off the video by looking at a specific reaction. So you can see I've written up there hydrolysis with aqueous sodium hydroxide. So we've actually already started the reaction off in the uh, previous section where we had the interaction between the hydroxide ion and the slightly positive carbon. So typically if you were carrying out this reaction you would reflux the sodium hydroxide aqueous with the halogenoalkane and what would happen is the hydroxide ion would interact with the slightly positive carbon and it would repel a pair of electrons that are already tending towards the bromine completely onto the bromine and it would break that covalent bond by heterolytic fission. So really straightforward mechanism this one. So you can see we've broken that CBR bond and we've formed a new covalent bond with the oxygen to the carbon. So there it is there, there's that new bond. And that's obviously the hydrogen that was already on the carbon. I've just put it at the top there. The bromine, when it comes, when it breaks off by this heterolytic fission, is now a bromide ion. And you can see I've written up that this is nucleophilic substitution. It's the name given to this mechanism. So nucleophilic because it involves a nucleophile, an electron pair donor. 
substitution because we've substituted a bromine atom in this case for the OH group or hydroxyl group so we've generated an alcohol from this reaction and obviously that would be propan 2 -ol.